this is Virginia from Peaceful Acres Farms and today we're going to be doing Furoshiki. This is a virtual program for Trustville Public Library. I've missed you guys. Okay, first we're going to talk about what Furoshiki is, then we can go over our supplies, and then I'm going to show you how to do some Furoshiki folds. So furoshiki is a traditional Japanese cloth that they use to wrap up gifts or just items that they need to carry. So you can use it to wrap up like a lunch box or a gift that you're going to take to somebody's house. And the beauty of furoshiki is that the cloth is usually a gift in and of itself. So you can spend time decorating this cloth or you can just buy a really, really pretty cloth and then it's part of the gift because it's so pretty. So today what we're going to do is use um, some foam and acrylic paint and we're going to stamp our own cloths and then we're going to learn how to fold them. Let's go over our supplies. So you're going to need some sort of natural fabric. I have a 100% cotton flour sack dish cloth. You're going to need a foam sheet and it's nice if yours has this sticky back where you peel and stick it down but if it doesn't it's not a big deal you can just glue it down. You're going to need some acrylic paint, and this is craft grade acrylic paint. A piece of cardboard, you can use a piece of a cardboard box, or you can even use a piece of a cereal box. Something stiff to glue your foam down on. You'll need a foam brush to use your paint, to apply your paint, a paper plate, and just a cup of water to rinse your brush. So the very first thing we're going to do is design our stamp to stamp our fabric. So you want to take your foam, if it has the sticky back, and you can draw a simple design or you can just freehand it and cut it out. And you want to cut out a design and then stick it, peel off the sticky part and stick it down onto your cardboard. I've already done mine. I just cut out some simple shapes and I stuck it down onto my cardboard. Now I am going to apply paint and stamp it onto my fabric. So you're going to take your foam brush and you're going to apply your craft paint To the foam. And you want to try to keep it just on the foam, not on the cardboard, but if it gets on the cardboard, it's not a big deal. You want to spread out your furoshiki cloth. And use your stamp to stamp a pattern. And then I'm just going to do it again and create a pattern on my fabric. Then you want to repeat the pattern however you'd like and cover your fabric. After the paint dries, you want to heat set the paint with an iron on the highest setting, usually cotton because this is a cotton fabric, and that makes sure that the when you wash it, the paint doesn't wash out of the fabric. So now that you've printed your fabric the way you want and then you let the paint dry and you iron over it for about 30 seconds on high heat, um, you're ready to fold something up. So the very first fold we're going to do is a bag and you don't necessarily have to have anything to put in it. Uh, so you lay out your cloth. This is a 27 by 27 inch cloth. It works best if it's about square, but if it's not, just work with whatever you have. Uh, the very first tie that you're going to do is you're going to grab this corner and this corner on one side and you're going to put those together and tie them in a square knot like you would your shoe. 
So it's just like when you tie your shoe. So you've got your little bunny ears and then you're going to do the exact same thing again but with the opposite one on top and then pull it tight and so I did this one at the very end so that's a big hole right there and we're going to go to the other side and we're going to do the exact same thing but we're going to do a small hole so we're going to do our little tie like you're tying your shoes but we're gonna do it big we're gonna pull it tighter this time then you're gonna go opposite direction and tie it and then pull it tight make sure it's nice and secure so your stuff doesn't fall out so now you have two sides one with like a big loop and one with the smaller loop. You're gonna take the big loop and you're gonna run it through the small loop. And it is gonna make a bag. It's hard to see if you don't have anything in it, so I have some wadded up paper that I'm gonna use to fill it just so you can see what it looks like. So I'm gonna unfold it and I have my little pocket. We'll put this in here. Then I'm going to run it through, and you can see it makes a bag. Okay, now for the super fun part, we're going to be doing some wine bottles. Alright, so you want to lay your wine bottles down after you spread your fabric out. This one you have to have a pretty large cloth to do. The 27 by 27 works well for this. So we're going to lay our wine bottles down, you're going to take a corner and fold it over. This is a cloth that I printed too by the way. I carved this and then printed it, made a homemade stamp basically. You fold the corner over, then you want to start rolling the wine bottles toward the other corner. Then you grab each end and you fold them up and then you take these two tails and you want to fold them like you would like you're tying your shoe so you do it first one way and then you do it the opposite way and that's called a square knot and then you have a little handle too to carry it and that makes a great gift when you go to somebody's houses don't just bring one bottle of wine bring two the next furoshiki fold we're going to do is another bag. Bags are my favorite, can you tell? So you're going to take one corner and the opposite corner and you're going to fold them like you're tying your shoe again. But this time, instead of just pulling them both tight, you're going to try to just pull one tight and make one bigger than the other one. You're going to leave this one little and pull this one tight. So sometimes you just kind of pull them both and then slide the knot. So now you can see I've got a small hole down here and one tiny little bunny ear and one giant floppy bunny ear. And then you're going to tie it again and make it tight and kind of tug on it make sure it's good and tight. So your end result is one small and one large. And then we're going to do the exact same thing with these two sides. Fold them together, leave one small. See if you can get that other one big. And then we're going to fold them together again. Make sure it's good and tight. So now I've got two big bunny ears and two little bunny ears. So now you want to take your two big bunny ears and these are going to be the handles to your bag. And you're going to square knot those together. So you're going to tie them like you're tying your shoe. Do one, and they can be even, tiny little ears, and then you want to do it again. Make sure it's nice and tight, pull on it, because you don't want things to fall out. So now you have like a little pocket to put stuff in. I have my handy dandy wadded up paper to show you. Let's put it so it makes 
a bag. And you can put whatever you want in there. So the very last first shiki fold we're going to learn is how to cover up a bento box. And this can actually be used to cover up any sort of box, even gifts. And these cloths make lovely gifts uh, to give to people. You can use it instead of wrapping paper. And they can be used over and over again. And they're kind of a gift in and of themselves. So a bento box is just a little box that carries food and they usually have little compartments. So I'm going to close this one up. I'm going to set it in the middle of the furoshiki cloth. And actually this cloth is so big that for this one I'm going to turn it upside down. And this one actually has a seal so you can turn it upside down. You fold one corner over. Then you fold the opposite corner over. Then I'm going to turn it back to the right side, flip that cloth over. I'm going to take these two corners that are left and bring them up and over the bento box and do my square knot. So I'll do it once, then I'm going to do it again the opposite way and pull it tight. And there you have, that could be a Christmas present or lunch. Thank you guys so much for crafting along with me. If you have any questions or comments for Trustful Public Library, you can drop them below. Or if you have a question about this specific project, you can email me or visit my website. Thanks!